Hello and welcome everyone to our first session this morning during the amazing Legs Matter Week. And what a fantastic week it's been today and I'm delighted to be with you here today. My name is Jamel Geraghty. I'm a registered nurse and specialist wound care consultant. I'm also very proudly a lecturer in nursing at the Florence Nightingale Faculty of Nursing, Midwifery and Palliative Care at King's College in London. I've been involved with the Legs Matter campaign since the very beginning as a trustee for the Tissue Viability Society and now very proudly as a trustee of the Lindsay Leg Club Foundation. The topic I will be exploring with you this morning is very close to my heart and we're going to be looking at social isolation and leg and foot conditions. We feel very passionately about this here at Legs Matter and also at the Leg Club Foundation. Looking after people, looking after you, it is what is important to us and we pride ourselves on this. And to do this, we need to look a bit deeper at this important, yet often sensitive and sometimes overlooked conversation in healthcare. People from all ages, from all walks of life, living with lower limb and foot conditions can experience profound periods of loneliness, self-doubt and pain and isolation. I do not take these words lightly as I speak them to you. This can impact on their daily life, relationships, work and mood and can prohibit people from seeking help for their condition. Leg and foot conditions have a significant impact on the life of the individual and the people around them, their families, their friends and their carers. As we move forward from COVID-19, we must reflect on the challenges faced during this time of isolation but also to look forward with hope and positivity to what can be done to diagnose and treat conditions of the lower limb. The information I will refer to today is from the NHS Better Health Every Mind Matters campaign. I've also sourced information from the National Institute on Aging and of course from our amazing Legs Matter website and the Leg Club Foundation website. I have no doubt that if you're watching this, either you or somebody you care about or are related to may be experiencing a period of loneliness or isolation. Please be reassured. Firstly, you are not alone. People do care and there are positive steps that can be taken to improve your health and well-being. It's important to recognise that although not everyone who lives with a lower limb and foot condition is considered an older adult, I think it's important as a society and within our local communities for us to recognise that older people particularly are especially vulnerable to loneliness and social isolation and it can have a serious effect on their health. But there are ways to overcome loneliness even if you live alone and find it hard to get out. Hundreds of thousands of elderly people are lonely and cut off from society in this country, especially those over the age of 75 years. According to Age UK, more than 2 million people in England over the age of 75 live alone and more than a million older people say they go for over a month without speaking to a friend, neighbour or a family member. People can become socially isolated for a variety of reasons and it's important to be able to talk openly about this, such as you know, we naturally get older and we get weaker as well, no longer being the hub of their family or potentially retiring and leaving the workplace. There's also, of course, the grief and the loss and the death of a spouse or a friend, which can have a huge impact, as we know, on wound healing particularly, and also can uh, result in people withdrawing from society. There's also the impact of disability and illness, either long-term illness or sudden illness. Whatever the cause, it's shockingly easy to be left feeling alone and vulnerable, which can lead to depression and a serious decline in physical health and well-being. Someone who's lonely probably only finds it hard to reach out, and there is certainly a stigma surrounding loneliness, and older people tend not to ask for help because they have. Sometimes it's a generation and sometimes they don't want to bother people and other times they may want to try and manage on their own. It's important to remember that loneliness can and does affect anyone of any age. For those of you who are over the age of 18 years and under 75, living with the lower limb condition related to your leg or foot, daily life and the future can seem really daunting. 
Maybe you've been out of work for a while and with your condition or you're worried about starting a new job or maybe your condition means that you're unable to work at this point in your life. You may have been worried about how your leg or foot condition is impacting on your body image, the clothes you wear, the footwear and the simple tasks such as showering and leisurely activities such as swimming, going to the gym, maybe playing football or going out for a walk. Maybe you're having to wear bandages or some form of compression therapy and you have concerns over what your body image and the impact of this on. You may also have a leaking wound or a skin condition that impacts on the clothes you wear and you may be concerned about the odour, the itch and the swelling. Your lower limb or foot condition may be affecting your relationships, either in your own family or your friends, potentially impacting on going out at the weekends or going out for meals. It also may impact on your intimacy. And these can be really difficult, sensitive conversations to have. But please do not suffer in silence. One of the things I feel really passionate about, and we all do here at Legs Matter, is reaching out to people recognizing that you need to talk about something that you're worried about, that you're stressed about, and that actually sharing a concern or worry, a problem shared is definitely a problem halved. Please, I say again, do not suffer in silence with these concerns or worries. Reach out and connect with a friend, a loved one, or a healthcare practitioner. There also are many useful charities and organizations that are hugely supportive and will offer a listening ear and someone to have a virtual, or telephone, and now fortunately even a face-to-face -face coffee and a nice piece of cake, something just to relax and reassure you and to have that space. And I think the other important thing to say is that silence within these conversations that we may have, not knowing what to say, that's okay too. Or becoming emotional, or maybe not feeling anything, feeling numb from these things. They're also really common emotions and it's okay not to be okay. Whatever the concern or worry, I ask that if you're living with the lower limb, foot or leg condition, and if you have yet to engage with your GP or healthcare practitioner for any of the reasons discussed, please do not delay. It is absolutely imperative that you connect or that you re-engage with your clinician to ensure you get a timely diagnosis and that your treatment has started. It may be that you were worried about revisiting your clinician because they haven't heard from you in a while and you're wondering what they think about you not turning up maybe at the last appointment or that you're worried that your leg or foot condition has deteriorated and you're embarrassed or worried of what your clinician will say or think. Please do not worry. Your clinician, we are here to help you. And your clinician will want to re-engage with you if they have not seen you for a while. Or if you're experiencing any new pain or any deterioration in your leg or foot condition, you must seek help immediately. Please do not be put off, for example, if your local service is busy or if the receptionist hasn't got back to you immediately or if the phone line is busy. Be patient and someone will get back to you. You may have to call back or you may have to follow up the phone call or the appointment, but it's important to be able to do this. Don't forget about it um, and don't let time pass you by. Please do not be put off if your local service is busy or if you don't want to bother anyone as you feel everyone is overstretched. You are important to us and we want to see you. Let's talk a little bit about health and well-being. I know it's really hard, we think, to fit these things into daily life, but actually even the smallest little change can have the biggest impact. Here are some ways to connect with others and to feel positive in daily life. First and foremost, and I recommend this personally, get out and about or move. Even if you can't physically leave the house, try and do some exercises in your chair. And I know that the Leg Club, particularly at the minute, we have been doing some amazing workout videos with Mr. Motivator, so do have a look at that. And again, these cater for everyone. People who can walk about and people who may have to spend more time in their chair. But do get out and about, go for a nice walk, go and see someone. Don't wait for people to come and see you. Travel if you can or visit them or arrange to meet up locally and have a coffee. Number two, and I think this is another really important one to remember, 
try and get a good night's sleep. It can be easier said than done, but try and go to bed a little bit earlier and to switch off from all the technology such as phones and TV. Try and read for an hour if you can and get a good quality night's sleep. It does make a huge difference to how you feel mentally and physically. So it's really important. Connecting with others, spending quality time with friends and family, talking to someone about how you're feeling or finding ways to help other people can all stop us from feeling lonely and improve our quality and mental health and well-being. You can do this online by phone or even better now we can see people in person. Consider exploring the practice of mindfulness or reflection. You may want to keep a diary or you may just want to take some time out either on the bus or on the tube on the way to work in the morning to reflect on what your next day is going to look like. Breathe. Practice breathing exercise for stress. And this next section I've got directly from NHS on the website, which again, I will post down below. This calming breathing technique for stress and anxiety just takes a few minutes and can be done anywhere. You will get the most benefit if you do it regularly as part of your daily routine. You can do it standing up, sitting in a chair that supports your back or lying on a bed or yoga mat on the floor. Make yourself as comfortable as you can and try and be warm and cosy. Loose clothes, um, something that doesn't restrict your breathing is ideal. If you're lying down, place your arms a little bit away from your sides with your palms facing up. Let your legs be straight or bend your knees so that your feet are flat on the floor. If you're sitting, place your arms on the chair arms. And if you're sitting or standing, place both feet flat on the ground. Whatever position you're in, place your feet roughly hip width apart. Let your breath flow as deep down into your belly as it is comfortable without forcing it. Try breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Breathe in gently and regularly. Some people find it helpful to count steadily from one to five. You may not be ready at first to reach five, but then without pausing or holding your breath, let it flow out gently, counting from one to five again. Keep doing this for about three to five minutes. You will get better as you go on, I promise and it does make you feel so relaxed. But practice makes perfect, definitely with this breathing technique. Another really important point in terms of keeping healthy and, and our well-being is to try and live a healthy as life as possible. And of course, that means having a balanced life, being active, enjoying the outdoors and having a healthy, balanced diet, all impact on how we feel. Also, trying to cut down and certainly give up smoking if you are a smoker and also cutting down on alcohol and caffeine can have a positive effect on your mood. The next one is something I think is really important and in the busyness and potential loneliness of daily life, we can forget this. Do something for you. From enjoying your favourite hobby to cooking a nice delicious meal to watching a movie, playing some music, learn something new or simply take some time to relax. It's important to do things that make you happy, like trying a new hobby or learning a new skill or even reading or starting a new book. The next tip is definitely one of my favourites and I can guarantee you it helps. Give back a little to the community and help others. If you have time, consider giving back to the local community or a charity. You'll get lots back in return, such as new skills, friends, confidence, and you'll have a fantastic time. You can consider potentially joining the local leg club. And again, you can have a look on our website, which is www.legclub.org for your leg club in your local area. And just a few notes about the leg club model. So you might want to have a look on our website, which tells you a lot more around the leg club model, which is embraces the significant issues of isolation, loneliness, 
mental health and well-being and the ability to empower individuals through knowledge of their condition and its treatment with a very direct involvement in their own care and social prescribing. This approach contributes to the positive outcomes that can be achieved by members of their leg clubs through empathy and peer support. I'm going to refer to a recent article which spoke about a debate, a parliamentary debate back in 2018, where a professor of nursing, Baroness Watkins of Tavistock, spoke about the leg clubs passionately. And she said that leg clubs are built around the notion of promoting people's independence and well-being. This social model of care is proving effective, not only in the treatment of the physical wound, but in promoting people's independence and mental well-being by reducing loneliness and isolation. The Lindsay Leg Club Foundation has created actually a YouTube channel and it's fantastic to help both healthcare professionals and members of the public with lower limb conditions to stay informed about its work. And our lifetime president and founder, Ellie Lindsay, OBE, talked a little bit about that in the recent publication and about the impact of COVID-19. And she says to us, the impact of COVID-19 pandemic has encouraged us as an organisation to review how we communicate with both healthcare professionals and our leg club members. Technology has been a wonderful resource for allowing us to stay in touch during this difficult period of time and has become part of our daily life. With this in mind, it seemed a great moment to get up and running the YouTube channel. So do have a look at it. There's some amazing video clips there. So let's summarise what we've talked about in this conversation today. I think first and foremost, it's important to recognise that anyone at any age can be living with a lower limb or foot condition and that people who experience this can have periods of isolation, loneliness and depression. Please do not suffer in silence. Please reconnect with your GP, your healthcare practitioner and seek an appointment as soon as possible. Please don't be put off if the service is busy if you can't get through on the phone, try again. We want to re-engage with you. We also know that living with a lower limb or foot condition, people can experience different feelings, grief, loss, embarrassment, loneliness. Please don't be embarrassed about reaching out. If you feel the condition has deteriorated, we want to see you, we need to see you. The sooner we see you, the sooner we can get you diagnosed, refer to the appropriate people and we can start your treatment as soon as possible. You will ultimately feel better as soon as you feel reassured that your condition is being looked after. The next thing I would say is try and do some of the well-being helpful tips that we've talked about today like connecting with others, getting a good night's sleep, speaking to someone, doing something for you, and maybe trying those breathing exercises. You may also want to look into joining one of the local leg clubs, either volunteering, where you can come and meet someone, or maybe as a patient yourself. Whatever the tips, I really hope that you enjoyed the session today. I certainly have enjoyed sharing some of my experiences with you. If you have a question, then please feel free to email me after this session today. And I wish you all a very pleasant rest of your day. Take care. Bye now.